right, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I hope uh, you had a great week so far. We're kicking off the Chain Abstraction Day. And uh, I think it's really exciting to see how this kind of movement been evolving over the past, I guess, like eight, nine months. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to talk about kind of some of the next phase that uh, we're seeing and some of the applications, uh, which some of you are building, uh, as well as, you know, then listen in on all of your presentations to kind of see how things are advancing in more detail. So the kind of one of the, like, the taglines we started, uh, chain abstraction, idea was that your dApps aren't real, right? Most of the kind of applications that built right now have been just a thin interface over a smart contract requiring user to understand in detail what's going on, the whole process of transaction processing, have a wallet, being able to set up everything. And it's like completely unusable, right, for people who are not willing to spend, you know, all of their time on crypto Twitter. And so the kind of process of this obviously being very evolutionary. We have a lot of different people trying to find what's the best way to build a blockchain, trying to best way to build middleware wallets. It's kind of extremely exciting to see, you know, lots of people trying different options, but what it led to is like unusable kind of experience, right? You have if you're launching on one chain, you're only targeting users of that chain, right? And every now, the, the new chain launching, you only have like a subset of users. You have fragmented, you know, liquidity, you have fragmented user experience, you never know where apps are, you never know, like, is this a real app as well? You have kind of problem finding uh, them, and as a developer, you have trouble, like, okay, am I launching multiple apps uh, on multiple chains? Am I launching multiple apps? Like, how am I branding them? As a user, right, I have, you know, dozen of wallet providers, you know, each wallet has, like, probably a bunch of different addresses in them, you know, I need to, like, remember, do I have, like, which token is on which chain for gas, figure out how to, uh, you know, bridge that, which bridge actually works, which bridge is going to get stuck. And at the end, like, users just want, you know, make money and have fun, right? That's, like, at the end, the kind of the, the summary of, of, our, of our needs. And so, like understanding all of the details is not something that like people are set out to do when they hear about Web3 and crypto. And so, you know, how do we go from like I need a wallet in every chain, there's like more chains launching so I need more wallets, to how do we kind of defragment and abstract all of this and really enable users to have one experience and interact with everything. And so that's kind of where we started with chain abstraction movement. It's really exciting to see more and more people joining. I was actually talking with some investors and said like, they said they have, you know, three to five projects pitching them chain abstraction every day now, right? Which is went from, you know, last year when I was talking about this idea to investors, they were like, oh, this is not happening. Like this is five years later, you know, nobody cares about user experience. It's going to be all, you know, more layer twos, that's a meta, right? And so. It's really exciting to see actually this is happening now. So, and obviously like all of these things you'd hear about, right, there's a lot of technology that goes under the hood to make it happen, right, because we want uh, a way to, you know, unite liquidity, which across different chains means we need a way to like settle things off chain and then settle them on chain. So we need intents, we need orchestration. You know, obviously we have a lot of different uh, kind of layer two, so we need a way to, uh, kind of modularize this stack. And so all of these parts, right, and underneath providing towards this vision of chain abstraction. So for us, when we started in 2018, uh, it was starting from a very much perspective of how do we solve a problem, right? We started because we wanted to do crowd crowdsourcing and pay people. And it was really strange when you think like, if I want to pay somebody for work on blockchain, they first need to go and acquire some crypto to start working on a platform. That's a very weird logic, right? And so we were thinking about chain abstraction kind of applied to near on how do we make it transparent to the user that, you know, they set up an account, they start using it. It feels like Web2, but it has all these properties. It's available everywhere. It's, you know, self-custody, it's user ownership. 
And at the same time, you know, the transaction fees can be paid by the application if needed, and you have kind of all of the complexity hidden from them. So that's, you know, we didn't have a chain abstraction as a word, but we were trying to kind of bring some of these concepts. We had account abstraction, we had a lot of kind of how do we abstract the blockchain. And now, in 2022, it was pretty clear there's a lot of chains going on, right? And we kind of went from, you know, one chain will win, uh, logic to, well, actually, there are going to be use cases for different chains. There are going to be different applications and, and different places. So how do we actually unite all of that, right? We started with decentralized front ends. Then we had, you know, how do we onboard users easier with fast thought? And then that kind of trickled into uh, chain signatures, which are how do we make it that one account can actually transact across all chains? And so that's really what kind of this evolution of thinking been happening, again, within the same vision, within the same thought process. And so uh, kind of the team at Pagoda have been building out the MPC network that is able to initiate transactions on other chains where those addresses are controlled by MPC network in a way, you know, turning kind of part of the near network into a custodian of the assets on other chains. Now, the way it works, right, there's a whole uh, kind of multi-party computation uh, network going on. Um, and, you know, you can have nodes joining and leaving, maintaining the same public key, uh, and kind of through that, the same, with the same derivation, the same addresses across all chains. And uh, we're planning to have this on mainnet in August uh, 2024. <laughs> Now, if this all seems too abstract, right, uh, I will go into some examples, right? So, first of all, you know, we all love DeFi, and we've had this kind of mindset that, you know, each chain needs to its own DeFi, right? Each chain needs to have its own DEX, its own lending protocol, maybe multiple DEXs they're going to compete, and this all leads to, you know, more and more fragmentation, more and more kind of uh, let kind of user needing to navigate, like, okay, where am I trading? And you do have some aggregators, but then aggregators still only work on one chain. And kind of with chain abstraction, I think it's time to change the mindset. It's time to go away from a chain-specific DeFi to DeFi, to really being able to transact across all chain at once, not needing to think what specific um, kind of underlying set of uh, platforms you're using. So we have a, quite a few projects building this space, right? I'm going to just call out a few. Uh, it starts with Diffuse, which is a multi-chain DEX. It's a uh, kind of generic OTC marketplace where you're able to transact the whole account, right? Let's say you have a Bitcoin account and you have an Ethereum account, and you can pretty much swap them, right? What this enables to do, you can actually trade a whole set of assets at once. Right, you can have Ethereum account with you know locked CRV with you know maybe some NFTs, and you can trade that for some Bitcoin with marked BRC twenties and ordinals. Right, you can have a very generic uh, kind of setup, and it's actually based on intent type uh, architecture where you just uh, indicate what you want uh, to receive, and then there are solvers that are able to figure out how to facilitate that. Right, they can be Arbin through centralized exchanges, they can be uh, are being through some of the local DeFi primitives on the specific chains. This allows you to really have this kind of one architecture, one interface, one kind of way to express what you want to trade and have a whole kind of set of off-chain actors to go and transact. Similarly, you can have lending, right, where you can deposit assets on any chain, right? You deposit Bitcoin, you borrow uh, USDC on Solana, right? That seems like a reasonable thing to have and uh, Yonder is working on that really to enable this kind of a singular experience where you don't need again to think about like, oh, I'm borrowing here, but the, you know, the balance is there, like I need to move the balance, I need to bridge it, you know, what's the security of this additional, uh, additional bridging. Uh, similarly, you have restaking, right? You can kind of uh, use the staking on all of the chains uh, to pretty much create uh, security for other be that layer twos or other applications that need that are running uh, off chain. Uh, Omni Labs is also working on multi chain decks uh, in a little bit different design. So the other side, obviously, Bitcoin has seen a major surgence, and we have a bunch of applications that kind of been excited to leverage this technology to 
apply to Bitcoin, right? So we have uh, Babylon that's building restaking with Bitcoin, and so Atlas is kind of working with them to create liquid restaking and make that asset potentially available across other chains. Uh, you have Ref Finance pretty much bringing some of the assets from Bitcoin to near through Trust Minimized Bridge. You have EastBlue building kind of you know, application platform. You have Paris, who in NFT marketplace that you know you are able to deposit ordinals and trade them on near at near speed and near uh, prices. Finally, there is a kind of design where, again, as a user, you don't want to go and like hunt uh, and set up accounts on every chain. So you have application, like you have wallets now that are offering you to be able to transact and log in into apps on other chains without needing to think about details, about bridging, about gas fees, right? So Bitte is allowing you to do this through natural language. You can say like, hey, you know, buy me a token on that other chain. Uh, and then you know, it constructs the transactions, it uses chain signatures, it kind of executes all that and pays for transaction fees. You have HOT, which already has actually 600,000 users across Base and Solana. Uh, transacting through their uh, version of chain signatures, as well as you have Sweat, uh, which is going to be launching with chain signatures to transact on uh, BNB. So this is really just bringing you these experiences that we've been talking about uh, in kind of variety of ways, right? Hot is inside Telegram, Sweat is a mobile app, uh, Bid is a, a web app that you know has one of the easiest onboardings in Web3. Now. Obviously, you've heard of AI, and uh, if you, you know, just uh, dropped into ACC, there's been a lot of <laughs> AI events, and uh, there's a whole kind of user on AI stack that's been built. Uh, we have kind of uh, a lot of projects we work in with on this, and they can benefit from using this because they can actually tap in into all of the other chains. They can process payments uh, across all of them. Uh, again, what BID is doing with natural language transaction formation is extremely important because it's really hard to navigate kind of blockchain space. Uh, but in natural language, you can say like, hey, build me an index of you know, top 20 tokens that launched in last month and by volume and uh, you know, buy $10 worth of, right? This is like something that you would require probably a developer to construct you manually, but you can actually do this with kind of this natural language interface. Um, and obviously, there's quite a few people working on how do we index all this data across all these chains and give you recommendations on what to do. You know, what is the new assets? What is the new fun things to do across all chains? So lots and lots of interesting things happening. Uh, now, one of the things that we've been thinking about is, OK, well, if we think that we have this multi-chain world, right? We need then multi-chain assets. We need something that lives everywhere. And so the idea of Omni token is that you can use kind of uh, what you deployed on near, and then you have ERC 20s, SPL, maybe even BRC 20 available across other chains. And importantly, you have a way to transfer it between different chains through kind of a unified interface, right? Now this is not going to be ERC 20, right? ERC 20 does not support. Uh, a, kind of an address that uh, has a chain address and it doesn't have support fees. Uh, but it is something that Ethereum themselves are talking about, right? There's AAP 3770. Vitalik talked about it um, kind of a few weeks ago that this is like extremely important where you should be able to send, you know, somebody else money without caring which, other cha which chain their address is on. So imagine you can just, you know, you're sitting on Solana and you just enter base colon illblackdragon.eth and it routes the money. Right, you don't need to think about like the bridging, you know, how is this going to be navigating? There's no bridge between Solana and Base, so you need to go through Ethereum. Like all of that should not be your concern. So that's kind of what the Omni token design that we're working on as well. Again, based on chain signatures, underlying tech is toward. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is so we talked about a lot about multi-chain, but there's actually a lot of interesting things you can do if you have this technology on near itself right near's account abstraction is really powerful you're able to have many different keys with different permissions on an account the account is a smart contract you can program it in different ways but it's always been limiting because uh, you can only have one uh, one contract right so let's say you deployed a multi-sig contract now if you want to deploy some other functionality you need to pretty much rewrite the smart contract add that functionality and redeploy it and what chain signatures allow to do is to have a smart contract 
and then that smart contract has a key on your account. Right? So to give you an example, let's say there is a social recovery contract that you install social recovery which adds a specific key to your account. And now when you want to recover your account, let's say you lost access, you know, Apple banned you uh, and your pass keys are not available anymore, you're able to go to, you know, five of your friends and tell them, hey, you know, uh, click this link, submit this uh, approval and that smart contract is able to submit a transaction on your behalf to add a new key to rotate keys. Similarly, you can do this with subscriptions, right? You can have a subscription contract that, uh, like one of the challenges in general in Web3 so far been that we're not able to withdraw money from users' accounts, right? You're not able to authorize somebody to withdraw money, and so we don't have the same kind of credit card system, right, where you just subscribe for, you know, $5 a month for some service. Um, you need to, like, top it off every time, you know, submit a transaction, and we don't have, like, good notification systems either. So now with uh, chain signatures, you're able to have a subscription contract. You pretty much install this contract's key in your account, and now when you subscribe to something, this contract can pretty much pull money out of your account or say that you don't have money and kind of cancel the subscription, right? So this is types of different experiences that you can now build with this. Intent execution is the same, right? You can have some complex intent to be then settled and executed on behalf of your account by a smart contract. Multi-sigs, you know, upgradability, all of the things that before would require a contract on your account and kind of management around that is now can be done externally. And for those who are familiar with kind of NEAR's uh, enhancement proposals, we had this idea of account extensions. This is pretty much implementation of account extensions, but in a way that uh, uses uh, chain signatures. So uh, I also would mention that, you know, there's no chain abstraction without abstracting the user interface, right? And so DabDab is a really good example of combining all of these different applications and experiences into one place where you can have kind of one account and you can transact across all of them. Uh, so if you haven't tried out DabDab before, check it out. They have, I think, 17 different layer twos, over 170 different applications available. Um, and I think on mode right now, they're generating like 90% of all transactions. Uh, through their interface. Finally, if you're, you know, if you're a developer and you're not building in chain abstraction yet, there's a quite a few requests for projects. I'm sure there's actually um, more folks here like Kendall and uh, David here who can uh, suggest more ideas, but I'm actually excited about the decentralized stablecoin because, um, you know, you can start with a maker design, but you can go to Athena design, which is, uh, uses short positions on other uh, perp exchanges, but you can have pretty much a multi-collateral stablecoin that's able to leverage, you know, combination of all the collateral we have in the ecosystem, balance it out, have, you know, short positions if needed, and issue a stable coin that's available through OmniToken everywhere, so you can actually use it on every chain. Uh, we have kind of, you know, a lot of opportunity on Bitcoin. I'll let, you know, folks to talk with Kendall about that, and uh, obviously more wallets that are able to kind of interact with specific chains uh, that's using this chain abstraction uh, is definitely needed and kind of integrations uh, with Wallet Connect, for example. So I'll just leave you with this meme, you know, don't be in a fragmented Web3 where, you know, you have lots of wallets, you need bridges, you need to figure out uh, kind of when your fund's gonna get unstuck from the bridge, uh, be the chain abstraction, uh, you know, uh, interact with all chains in one interface, be able to see everything in one place, and uh, access kind of everything uh, across, across the Web3. Thank you and hope you enjoy the day today.